Hello again everybody and welcome back to Fujits Blitz and this is another real history video. I'm going to be looking at the top five worst tanks ever produced or designed or considered during World War II. So we've got to close to number one, almost there, but before we go that far, let's have a look at some of the honourable or dishonourable mentions who didn't make the list. Now I've avoided all of the Hobart funnies, which were the tanks developed for D-Day, before anybody asks, and focused on actual tanks. Starting off with this little beauty, the French Char 2C. Interesting tank. Didn't make the list because it was in fact a tank developed during World War I. It just didn't see action in World War I. It had to wait quite a long time and be rolled out in World War II. It's a French super heavy tank and as you can see it's a bit of a land monster. This tank is notorious as being the largest ever operational tank that was never operational. The French took it on a train. The train was on its way to Dijon, by all accounts. This train contained 10 of these tanks. And apparently it rounded a bend and the track in front of it was destroyed. They were unable to remove the tanks from the train, so the French crews just destroyed the tanks. German propaganda at the time said that all the tanks were destroyed by Stuka dive bombers. That is now being disproven and yes the French crews did in fact destroy their own tanks. The Germans however did discover the wreckage and they managed to find a complete tank, the Charlemagne, which they then returned to Berlin to gawp at and ridicule as a war trophy. As I said the reason why this one didn't make the list, well it's not a World War II tank, it's actually a World War I tank and that is the only reason it did not make the list. Next we have the Antonov A-40 glider tank, an interesting Soviet tank concept. This idea came around because the Russians tried dropping tanks by parachute, but the problem with that was they had to drop the crews and the tank separately, and very often the crews and the tank didn't marry up. So this was decided to be built. The glider tank, which was strapped to the bottom of an Antonov aeroplane, a heavy bomber, you can see one there, taken up and effectively dropped <laughs> and then it would glide its way down. The problem was the Antonov struggled with the tank with the wind resistance and the drag and it's only ever flight. The Antonov took off and before long it ran into trouble was about to crash so it had to drop the tank. The tank itself managed to land safely discard its wings and drive back to the base. But the Russians decided that, wow, this was just a stupid tank. It had absolutely no purpose whatsoever. The reason it doesn't make the list is because the tank itself is actually not a bad tank. It's just the concept of sticking it on a glider and throwing it on onto the bottom of a bomber. That is stupid. But in fairness to the Russians, it wasn't as stupid as this British design, the Hafner Rotor Buggy, which is basically a Willys Jeep with some form of helicopter contraption strapped to it. This was a prototype. It's not a tank, clearly. Um, it's just in there because it's stupid. This, thankfully, only one prototype was made. It did fly, but it was destroyed. A replica, however, does exist at the Museum of the Army Air Corps at Middle Wallop in England. Not a tank, so not on the list. We go back to the French with this little gem, the Collop one to two man tank. Thankfully, this never got past the drawing stage. A French tank that was meant to house a single man, although the designer does say that there were meant to be a two man crew, would have been very cramped, with a machine gun. He would use his feet and two little control sticks to move the thing, um, a completely daft concept to be honest with you, and it was intended to be used as sort of mine. Well, I don't know. Nobody really knows what it was intended to be used for. But then having a ready-made coffin for when you got destroyed, I guess. Because it had absolutely zero combat value. I mean, it was very low to the ground. It couldn't do mine clearance because you'd blow yourself up. What a bizarre tank indeed. Didn't make the list because it's not really a tank, let's be honest. Next, we go slightly more bizarre. The Kugelpanzer, or the German ball tank. 
Nobody has any idea what this tank was, and this is one of many ball tanks that was considered, including such tanks as the American Tumbleweed tank and the Polish Kahn's Rolling Fortress. Thankfully, the latter two were never made. The Germans, however, did make this. It was discovered and captured by the Russians in Manchuria, so the Germans were clever enough to offload this thing to the Japanese. The use of this tank, like I said, nobody really knows. Some think it's for mine clearance, some think it's, well, no, it's just a design concept to see if anything could be done with these things. The, the irony is, nobody, it never really saw action, never really saw combat, and you know, it's just one of those bizarre oddities of World War II. The reason it didn't make the list, it is just not a tank, it's just a ball of metal, and that is it. There's no turret, there's no gun, there's nothing. So that's why it didn't make the list. You can see this strange contraption, however, in Kubinka Tank Museum in Russia. Finally, we come to those canny New Zealanders. No, we're not gonna talk about the Schofield tank, which in itself was a stupid tank, but it did sort of work. It was a tank that had wheels and could be used in both concepts. Thankfully, it was only a prototype. No, I'm not talking about the Schofield tank at all. I'm talking about the mean tank. That's the one, the Bob Semple. Wow. I mean, this tank is just ridiculed across the board. Everybody has it as the worst tank ever made, the stupidest tank ever made, or whatever. But that is being a slightly harsh to Bob Semple and those canny New Zealanders. This was New Zealand's first ever tank. And it was very cheap. It was just basically corrugated iron smacked onto a tractor with some machine guns whacked on the top. It cost next to nothing to build. The thing you've got to understand is this came about because of New Zealand's worry that the Japanese were going to invade. Now, the Japanese weren't big on their tanks. Their tanks weren't that great, funnily enough. They were very lightly armoured. And the Japanese didn't rely on tank formations or mass tank attacks. So this tank, in its context, does make sense, funnily enough, because it really wouldn't have faced any meaningful opposition other than men with swords doing banzai charges. The reason it didn't make the list, well, it's not strictly a tank despite its designation. It's actually an armoured fighting vehicle, at which of, of which tanks form part of that genus. It's more akin to an armoured personnel carrier. It actually had a six to eight man crew, oddly enough. The armour protection was dubious at best. I mean, it was just a bizarre design. But fair play to those canny Kiwis for coming up with their first ever tank. That gave the rest of the world something to rightly laugh at. I have been Fujit. That have been the honourable or dishonourable mentions that didn't make the worst tank list. By all means, comment, like, and everything below. If you haven't yet, press subscribe. It's a nice thing to do. Doesn't cost you anything and puts a smile on my face. Again, I'd like to thank my Patreons for kindly supporting me. Without their support, videos like this would be a lot harder. If you want to be a Patreon, by all means, click the link and pop across. We will come back with number one tomorrow. I know you're all waiting with eager anticipation. But hey, until then, stay safe.